This week is business as usual as structure grinding continues. Some new alliances make an appearance. Will the initiative redeploy? And if so, where to? And Imperium keep stars continue to be destroyed en masse. Hello pod people, I am Frost and this is your EVE Online War Update. Welcome back. So before we jump right into the news, uh, I've got a few shout outs to make. Uh, the first one is to Declarations of War, who invited me onto their podcast, which was released last Tuesday. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Talking Stations gave me a big endorsement for about 10 minutes on their Saturday night show, which was brilliant. Thank you too. And also to Imperium Network News, uh, I appeared on their, on their website yesterday, that Sunday, uh, on a whole article where I did an interview for them. So to all three of those groups, thank you very much for, uh, for bringing me into the spotlight, so to speak, and I really do appreciate it. Right, time to move on. Oh, links in the description as well. Right, so time to move on, uh, back up to my box as always, and uh, we have our New Eden map in front of us. Uh, I do my usual squiggle at the beginning, uh, just to highlight the areas that are relevant to the war at the moment. Unfortunately, we're gonna make, miss out Omist as well as usual. Uh, we're going to miss out Paragon Solar Period base as well because there's not much going on there except ADMs are rising and that's about it. So there you go, so it's my kind of weird fishy thing as usual. And uh, we will go from right to left. So um, I haven't quite got so much to report on this week, uh, so I expect the video hopefully to be a little bit shorter, uh, primarily because uh, the structure grinding is kind of reducing, especially on the east, uh, there's still quite a lot going on in Delft. Um, and uh, in Quirius, but uh, in the sort of the old legacy regions, uh, they're kind of running out of structures to shoot now. So, um, so yeah, the, as you'll see when I'm talking through the video, you'll see that there's a lot less than we had before. All right, so let me show I've got my pen switched off, uh, and I'm going to jump first into Tenerifis now. Uh, oh, I've got my activity defense multipliers up. There we go. Let's go on to iHubs. So the area we're going to look at is the area formerly known as the Vindictive Sov, and uh, as you will see. Uh, if I draw this line around here, there we go. This whole area did belong to Vindictus. In other words, these are all IHUBs. All the IHUBs have been cleared. Now, last week, about half of them had got cleared. There's only one left, as you can see there, and it's actually in timer right now. Um, I mentioned last week that these timers, I wasn't quite sure who was, uh, was actually hitting the SOV here. And I actually found out, um, uh, they got in touch with me. It is a specialist SIG group. Now, if you're not don't know what the SIG is, it means a special interest group. So it's normally a, spe a specialized uh, kind of group that focuses on a particular activity within an alliance. And this SIG group belonged to Goonswarm Federation. And uh, they let me know that they were out the back there. They gave me some uh, proof as well, so I can actually confirm that that is definitely them. So there you go, Goonswarm acting in the back lines there uh, with a SIG group. Uh, removing all of these uh, Bindi eye hubs. So that's pretty much it for Tenerifis. Uh, not much going on. Oh yes, there's a Keepstar. Last week I mentioned that there used to be a Keepstar in 16 a.m. Uh, used to be a test Keepstar, used to be in their chain. I wasn't sure if they handed it over to XIX. I went and checked it earlier today and there's nothing there. So it looks like it's just been cleared out completely and it got unanchored at some point. So there is uh, actually very little in Tenerifis whatsoever in terms of structures and, and so forth, except for uh, Kick in the, in the Northwest, who have a, a few bits and pieces. So there you go. So that's uh, pretty much Tenerifis. So what we'll do then is we'll go and uh, have a look at Immensia. So in Immensia, um, one of the things to note is an iHub uh, got removed. This was the test iHub. Now, I can't remember if this was a Keepstar system or if it was a jump gate system. Either way, I went and had a look. Once again, I couldn't find anything uh, in terms of those two structures. Uh, so that looks like it got cleared out and someone went in and cleared out the iHub as well. So there's no test presence here whatsoever now. Uh, as you can see, there's still these Vindi iHubs uh, up here. Uh, how long these will stay, who knows, is, is my understanding that Vindictive have now com moved completely, I think it's to Paragon Sol. See, the Paragon Solar period base is one of the two. Uh, so, uh, and they've been pushing up their ADMs down there, so they looks like they've, they've completely moved out, and I expect these to kind of disappear at some point, if somebody can be bothered to do it. And as you saw with Tenerifis, Siberian squad still have a uh, sov there that's left over from like two or three months ago from when they, they actually left. Uh, the, the Pappy side and uh, moved over to the Imperium. So who knows? Uh, also, whilst I'm in Immensia as well, uh, I need to mention uh, a last week I talked about an Asbel. Let me bring it up. I've got it here somewhere. Uh, here we go. So this Asbel, uh, I was a little bit confused because it was a Combat Wombat Asbel and it got killed by Combat Wombat. So it got AWOXed. And uh, I actually spoke to Combat Wombat and found out what had happened. 
And what it is, is they bought the Asbel from Rosado Regnum. Now we're gonna be talking more about Rosado Regnum a little bit later on. But they bought the Rosado Regnum and kind of moved out and uh, they bought it from them. Uh, but what they did, which is really, really clever, is they let it go abandoned and then they shot it. So then not only did it drop the core, you know, which you can see right here is the, the big sort of three billion drop. Let me bring up my pen again, which is right there. Uh, but also it dropped all the personal stuff that was in the Asbel. Uh, so um, there, there was some talk, you know, with, and we'll come back onto Rosada Regnum later, but uh, you know, that was a bit of a dirty job to, uh, to sell an Asbel to the enemy because they can do this. They can let it go abandoned uh, and then they get a much bigger loot drop. So, um, and it's stuff from people's personal hangers. So there you go. So that's kind of what was happening there. Uh, so hopefully that clarifies uh, from what I was talking about last week. Right, so let's move on to Impasse. So if we go over to Impasse, now Impasse, uh, as you can see now, is very, very different. Uh, I have also done some investigating here. Uh, I did do it, I did have a blonde moment last week when I said that Red Alliance was part of the Imperium. Red Alliance are not part of the Imperium. Red Alliance are allies to the Imperium. But Red Alliance have the Red Alliance Coalition, or the Red Menace Coalition, I think it's called. Uh, and uh, funny enough, you'll be very surprised to hear there are four alliances in this uh, coalition and they happen to be red, they happen to be Midas 22, sorry in advance, and what could possibly go wrong? So it is very much now happy families in impasse. You know, it's, uh, they own the whole region to themselves uh, from a time zone point of view. I think sorry in advance and, and uh, what could possibly go wrong are the US time zone. Uh, and then uh, Red and Midas 22 are kind of more over on the Russian time zone. So they kind of got a good uh, spread of time zones there as well. Now, uh, the last kind of things that, that kind of died off in impasse uh, were actually in PZMA and 442 CS. Uh, there were three Satios. Um, so there was, uh, they were all belonged to Brave. So one was in 442 uh, CS, two were in PZMA E, and that was kind of the last of it. Uh, now, the people that are involved in that were, um, let me just double check, but uh, I'm pretty certain it was, it was kind of, yeah, it was Red, Red Menace Coalition uh, and then the initiative also got involved in that as well. Now, this brings up something I mentioned uh, in the introduction, is uh, what happens now to the initiative? The initiative have kind of burnt all the structures, as you know, that like, it wasn't last week, the week before, they, they killed some ridiculous amount. It was, it, was, it was actually more than the whole of Pappy combined in terms of structures that were large and extra large. So whilst Pappy did destroy more keep stars, uh, they destroyed more structures, just the initiative on their own. Uh, and it was mostly an impasse, I think some Fethabolis and uh, some Immensia as well. So really now, uh, it's really what happens now to the initiative. So the initiative are actually deployed in curse. And uh, it's, uh, it's gonna be the question now is where do they go to next? Because they really don't have that much to do. As you'll see when we come on to catch, there's not really that much going on there either. So I'm going expecting the initiative to deploy, but I'm just not quite sure where. Uh, I personally, I think they may possibly go to Fountain, uh, or they may even potentially try and deploy. I mean, obviously they need the NPC space is really useful. They might try and uh, go to NPC Delph as possible, and then start jumping into Aquarius, uh, maybe go into low sec just next to Aquarius, and then go and attack Aquarius. I think that is a good possibility, but we will have to see. That is just purely guesswork on my point of view. So um, I think we're pretty much done with impasse. So we're going to leave impasse now and uh, we're going to move on to Fethabolis. So uh, apologies for Fethabolis. I forgot Fethabolis last week. Um, no, not Fethabolis. I forgot Esoteri, Esoteria last week. So Fethabolis. So as you can see, Fethabolis, uh, what has really changed now is uh, all these test systems, uh, as you can see here, are kind of all burning as well as these AARP ones. And uh, I believe this is primarily due to the Bastion having taken an iHub here. And it looks like they've used this as their staging. Now, one of the things you're going to see is, if I just clear this up quickly and just highlight the Bastion here in TR07, and then we highlight uh, Deepwater Hooligans up here in JI-LGM, you will see, uh, you will understand why these systems are getting reinforced and why um, IOU as Evictus have been currently left alone. Now, I don't know how long that's going to last for, but the reason why is due to jump, re uh, jump ranges. So, if we actually look at the jump range for TR07, 
There we go. This is now all the ones that have the black uh, circles around the systems. And you can see that it's basically all of the systems that have been reinforced. And then if we look at the one for deep water hooligans, uh, you could see that once again, it covers all these areas down here as well. So um, that's kind of the reason why Victus has kind of been left out at the moment because they're kind of out of jump range of these two kind of force projection uh, systems. So I would imagine as, as if the Bastion choose to advance deeper or deep water hooligans do, uh, then Victus may then potentially be under, under fire, but that will have to remain and we'll have to wait and see. Uh, there was a fort that died in HP4, which I can't even remember where it is now. It's somewhere on the map. Uh, it's, uh, let me just make sure I've definitely got the right one. Now, uh, H. Let me just look it up quickly because <laughs> I'm pretty good on my systems. Um, HP4LB, there we go. Right, there we go. So there was a Fortizar that died here. Uh, the only reason why I bring it up uh, is literally the only Fortizar that died in Fethabolis. Uh, in fact, the only structure, the larger, extra large structure that died. Uh, but it died to uh, deep water hooligans and uh, in Nvidia Gloria comes RGC, who I talked about quite a bit last week, who are now either independent or potentially allied to the Imperium, uh, but are no longer part of Legacy in terms of they used to rent space from Legacy and that agreement is now over. And that can be seen by the fact that they are shooting Legacy structures. All right, so uh, that brings us up to date on uh, Fethabolis. Uh, oh, by the way, just uh, very quickly in Fethabolis, I'll just uh, show in the top left here, if you're just wondering if you're not familiar with Dotland, the green means that there's an incursion going on at the moment. Uh, so that's why those uh, systems are highlighted in green. All right, so let's move on to catch. Now in catch, um, really what we're seeing is, uh, I'm quite surprised, first of all, to see that um, J-ODE7 is still alive. Uh, also, um, Severance still have their system down here. Uh, they haven't pushed it further in. Uh, I thought they might do that this week, but they haven't. Uh, and so therefore the focus is very much on uh, new systems that have been taken. So I'm, I talked about against all authorities uh, last week, I think the week before. Uh, they've now taken two new systems up here um, and in BTAC, B-XJX4 and 7LHB-Z. Um, so it looks like they're kind of just spreading out a little bit. Uh, they used to be part of the Stain Wagon Coalition. Uh, they're part of Stain Rus, who are mostly Russian-speaking alliances that normally live in Stain when they get pushed out of catch and the southern regions. And it looks like they're making a, a trip back in now. Uh, also of note is uh, French Connection. So French Connection only had one system. Uh, they're now spreading out a little bit as well. And uh, they fly very closely with the initiative. And as you can see, there's a uh, initiative systems here, the same as last week, so no change there. So that's pretty much it for catch. Um, there was a, a fort that died in um, Q-U, and it looks like it was a, an Evictus Fortisar. Uh, once again, just the one structure that died in catch. So this, you see what I mean by the structure grinding is really kind of coming to a halt now. And uh, catch is really kind of becoming very, very stable now. And uh, everyone seems quite happy with the territory they have uh, at the moment. All right, so um, catch is done. And then I've got to make sure that I cover Esoteria, which I forgot last time. So Esoteria, there we go. So uh, what we're seeing with Esoteria as well is things are really kind of settling down. There's been no structure bashing. Uh, there hasn't been much in the, from what I can see in the way of soft warfare. Uh, a line has been drawn now between uh, Ferrata and the Bastion and uh, Good Sacks have now kind of taken this northern edge. Uh, and then obviously everything below it seems to be uh, Army of Mango and uh, Vectors. And uh, Army of Mango are allies to the uh, Legacy Coalition, but they're not part of Legacy Coalition. And then Vectors, as we saw, were moving out from Fethabolis, or I would expect to moving out from Fethabolis. My pen has gone really thick again, uh, so let me fix that. Uh, there we go, and make sure it's the right size again. And uh, there we go. And then uh, also just up the top here, uh, I talked about TR07. Uh, that's why uh, it, it makes sense for the Bastion to reach into Fethabolis, as it's just a natural extension of the territories they have up the top. There are a couple of Keepstar systems in here. Uh, we have DTX8-M. Uh, we have D-P. These are test Keepstars. And I think Army and Mango have their Keepstar in R-ARKA. All right, so, but otherwise, apart from that, Esoteria does seem to be, from a strategic point of view, 
very, very quiet now with, like I said, lines being drawn. All right, so uh, before we go any further, uh, I'm just going to say very quickly, uh, please do like, subscribe and hit the bell icon uh, if you enjoy my war updates and my Alliance Spotlights. Uh, please do mention me in your Discord Corp, uh, Corp Discords and your Alliance Discords. And uh, always please leave me some comments. Uh, that It's always really nice to, to have the comments and I try to reply to as many as possible. I do a pretty good job still uh, and I really do appreciate all that kind of feedback and interaction. And also it helps the YouTube algorithm, which is a good thing. So it helps to build some more subscribers. All right, so we're going to move on now. And uh, we're going to cover uh, just three systems left. We have Quirius, Fountain, and Delve. All right, so uh, let's go to Quirius. So with Quirius, uh, I have a new uh, alliance to talk about. So I'm, I talked about them very briefly last week, and it's, that's Sentinel Dawn. So Sentinel Dawn uh, are right here, and they took this whole constellation. I didn't really know who they were. They were a new alliance. And, uh, and the, uh, the Alliance leader got in touch with me and I got to find out a bit of goss, a bit of gossip. So, essentially, Sentinel Dawn have come from the ashes of Reseda Regnum. So Reseda Regnum kind of had a bit of a falling out uh, internally. Um, they kind of had a collapse. I believe they tried to take this constellation as Reseda Regnum, but they, did, they didn't achieve it. And there was a parting of ways. Now, the original CEO uh, of Reseda Regnum uh, has moved and created a new corp called Free Wind, Free Wind Riders, uh, and they have gone joined uh, uh, Legion of Death. So uh, they've actually uh, gone and uh, joined XIX to be specific. Yeah. So XIX Legion of Death, they've become a corp within that alliance. Uh, the reason why is because they directly did have a large contingent of uh, Russian speakers, uh, and so therefore it kind of made sense for them to go to, uh, to Legion of Death. But uh, the military leader, uh, of Reseda Regnum, uh, went and decided that he wanted to stay in Quirus, and a whole bunch of their pilots, uh, quite a lot of their PvP pilots, uh, decided they wanted to, uh, to go with him. And so therefore, uh, they created a new alliance called Sentinel Dawn, which we now see here. And Sentinel Dawn is also fully part of Legacy Coalition, so they are part of TAPI. So there you go. So that was a little bit of an update on that alliance and what's going on there. So it is difficult to keep track. You know, new alliances pop up all the time and people move around the map. And uh, I try and keep you up to date to, to the best of my abilities. So apart from that, really, uh, the other only other stuff that's happened in Quirius is uh, some structures have died. Um, so particularly, um, let's see, we had two Goon, keeps, uh, Goon Swarm Keep Stars go down. So we had one in GOP. Uh, and we had the other one in W6V-VM. So I mentioned both of these last week that they were on Doom Clock. Uh, there are still three left. Uh, they're in Fake Delve or Fake Quirius, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're in these three uh, systems down here. Uh, they're all Doom Clocked, as I believe. I think they're all Doom Clocked. So they're pretty much ready to go and these will potentially be attacked soon. Uh, one thing to mention though um, is uh, so supers uh, uh, have been brought in, obviously, to keep the keep stars. So that means uh, super carriers and titans. But uh, one thing I wanted to highlight is that uh, the uh, W6V-VM keep star went down swinging with a kill. And it killed a hell. Uh, it did it with uh, just this doomsday weapon. And the, uh, the reason why this hell died uh, was primarily because it's a ratting fit. Uh, it had hyperspatials here. In fact, let me just go back and I can hover over it. There we go. You can see that it had hyperspatials, uh, had an active tank. Uh, the tank, did, from the damage, uh, the tank wasn't turned on, uh, wasn't paying attention, got doomsday and died. So there you go. So bring the right ship to a fight and make sure you turn your hardens on, uh, especially when they use very little cap when you're in a supercarrier. So unfortunate death there. Uh, the beacon provides is what's been called. Uh, I think it was, should be the doomsday provides, but there you go. Lessons to be learnt. Uh, and uh, I've shown Imperium uh, stuff do silly stuff. I've shown Pappy stuff do silly stuff. And it keeps on happening. So there you go. A little bit of education there as well. All right. So um, I've covered uh, Quirius, I think. So yeah, I covered the two uh, keep stars that died and the three that are remaining. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, go jump up to Fountain. So in Fountain, uh, it was pretty quiet. Once again, only one Fortizar died. Uh, it was a Goonswarm Fortizar in C-N4OD. And uh, that was pretty much it. Uh, so as far as we know, um, the initiative are still, uh, and um, 
Siberian Squad is still staging out of uh, NPC uh, Fountain. Um, but otherwise, the SOV situation hasn't really changed. I think, I think one of these systems up here went from Siberian Squad to Federation Uprising. Siberian Squad being part of the Imperium, so Federation Uprising being part of Legacy Coalition, therefore PAPI. Uh, but otherwise, it's been pretty quiet, except for a new alliance has appeared on the map, and that is Stella Renasitur. And uh, they are right here. And you can see they took these uh, three systems here, and these four systems here. I know nothing about this alliance. Uh, I had a look, it looks like they had some uh, Russian sounding names and some German sounding names in their corp. And uh, if someone belongs to, uh, let me pronounce it correctly, Stenar Rena Situr, uh, please get in touch with me. I'd love to know more about you and uh, what you're doing in Fountain. Um, and if you're just taking advantage of the situation. But apart from that, uh, that's pretty much it for Fountain. It's been pretty, pretty stable. So, uh, let's move on to Delve, and uh, let's get to Delve, there we go, boom, boom, boom. Right, so in Delve, uh, so stuff has still been dying, uh, there's still been structure grinding. Uh, in fact, there was one system uh, which was, uh, let me see, NIDJ-K, which in one night, uh, just a ridiculous amount of structures died. Uh, essentially, the whole system got cleared within the space of about 12 hours, so the value of 168 billion. I think I actually have a, a battle report there for, for that. Uh, there we go. So you can see, uh, here we go. So a Sotillo, uh, a Fortizar, Tatara, Astra House, Athenor, right through uh, for, you know, a big chunk of change. So uh, that, that's kind of the level of structure grinding that is going on at the moment. So in total, um, there was some, uh, some Imperial Asbels that died. So five belonged to, to uh, TNT, that's Tactical Narcotics Team. So TNT were based in these two systems here, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, and uh, they, they lost a lot of Asbels. Uh, we then had, uh, so five belonged to TNT, there was a Bastion Asbel that died and a uh, Goon Swarm one. Uh, then Sotillos, uh, there was four Goon Swarm Sotillos that died, uh, primarily in this northwest corner, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then uh, two uh, Goon Swarm Fortisars, of which one was a Faction Fortisar, Dracus Fortisar, and two Tactical Narcotics Team's uh, Fortisars, one of which was a Horizon Fortisar. And it's worth mentioning the Horizon one, because I believe that now takes us below the 100 count. So I believe there are now only 99 Horizon Fortisars left in the game. So then we come on to the Keep Stars. So the, the, uh, the, the whole Doom Clock thing has still been going along. Uh, Pappy are still continuing to destroy Keep Stars, uh, and uh, they are, looks like they will continue to do so before they, they make a, try and make an assault onto the 1DQ1-A associated constellation. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So just a quick little update on uh, the Keep Stars, what's going on. Uh, the Keep Stars, uh, let me bring them up. There was um, 8RQ, uh, so there was a one in here. Uh, there was, uh, they were kind of all in the same area, if I remember correctly. Uh, there we go, so 8RQ, R R5, uh, which was over here. Uh, then we had uh, E3OI, there were two Keep Stars in here. They were both destroyed on the same day. And uh, T-J, so T-J, uh, I can't even remember where that is. Uh, <laughs> oh yes, there you go, it's right there. Right, so there you go. So there was one left in this uh, constellation down here. This constellation over on the left here was mostly uh, dealt with the week before. And uh, these were taken out uh, this week. Uh, so I believe on the Doom Clock now, um, uh, there are some in this constellation up here uh, that uh, need to be taken out. And then there are some that are still upcoming on the June clock. So in other words, they haven't reached the 35 days yet uh, on their strategic index. And I think that's UAXO, uh, PUIG, and I think O0-HDC8 uh, are the three remaining ones. And in fact, we can actually see that probably if we look on uh, Z Killy, uh, we, can, uh, we can see that. Let's have a look. Uh, Z Killy. Yeah, there we go. So you can see the 0 tac h uh, PUIG, and there's one in PS-94K, uh, which is actually uh, up here. And uh, it's kind of got forgotten, apparently. So when that has happened, um, and as you can see, if we go back once again to the Z Killy Do map, uh, you can see now from the right-hand side that uh, a lot of the keep stars have been destroyed. Uh, I've kind of highlighted the ones that are gonna be coming up this week that are already doom clocked. Uh, and then within the next two weeks, potentially, uh, if these are not flipped, in the meantime, the IHUBs are not flipped and the Doom Clock is reset, uh, then that means potentially within two weeks, 
all keep stars that are not part of this constellation will have been destroyed. And it really does appear now that the play is 100% uh, that uh, the Imperium was just going to sit tight and focus wholly on this constellation. So the Imperium members are taking a break, they're chilling out because they know that when an attack does come, because Pappy will need to attack this at some point if they want to reach their win conditions, you know, which is to fully push uh, and, and get rid of Goon Swarm, that was their, their, their words, I believe. Uh, whilst uh, the conditions uh, for winning for the Imperium are just to stay in Delph and stay alive. And so they, uh, they can just sit it out for as long as they want. Now, if I remember correctly, I think there are 11 keep stars in this constellation, five of which are in 1DQ1-A itself. And that's not even counting all the faction Fortizars and everything else that's in there. So um, it does appear that um, for the time being, uh, we are going to continue with the structure bashing in, on the Pappy side, and then we are going to see probably some redeployment uh, from the initiative. Uh, maybe the Bastion, maybe the Bastion are quite happy sitting in Essenteria at the moment, I don't know. Uh, and Goonswarm are just going to sit tight, and, uh, and uh, Pappy are just going to have to continue uh, with their structure bashing, uh, and uh, so that uh, Tess, as you can see, can get themselves kind of implanted in Delve. And, uh, we will see where this plays out. You know, maybe, maybe in the long run they'll just they'll have just Test and uh, and uh, the and Goonswarm just living next door to each other in Delve, just constantly fighting each other every day. Or maybe it will come to one big battle and we will have an end to this war. Who knows? We shall see. Uh, but in the meantime, please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications. Mention me in your Corp Discord. Mention me in your Alliance Discord. And uh, that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else from me. I'm just going to double check my notes. No, I am all done. All right. See you on the next one. Oh, Alliance Spotlight is coming out this Thursday and is a good one. Hopefully uh, you will uh, check that out as well. All right. That's all for me. Bye.